So we've just come along to Buffles Hook Dam where I believe, I'm not sure whether it's the same one, but we have had this happen twice now, I believe, in the past, that a honey badger has come down to scratch around. I'm sure there's plenty of invertebrates and insects in here for the honey badger to actually collect and forage and eat and hunt. And so let's watch it as it does that. I wonder if it's going to... And it looks like this one didn't come down to find food this time. It looks like it just came down for a drink. See that head though, always moving. Honey badgers generally actually are also always moving.
Which is really bizarre because this is the den that we first drove past and this is the den where I got the smell of something awful and rotting like a carcass. And we've came back to it and we have a gorgeous moment of two. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> that is happiness if I've ever seen that. So they are effectively using three dens. The Juma clan are using three dens and potentially even more. There's so many tournament mums in this area, but the dens are all on the same path and they're really not far away from one another. So this is just absolute cuteness right here in front of us right now. Now, I feel like I have to sort of whisper here, and I don't, but this beautiful bird, this crested barbet, is very close to us right now. Look at the view Seb has given us, because this bird is so close. Now, generally, they really do tend to fly away, so that's why we stop, because I'm quite privileged to be sitting here so close to this bird, this beautiful crested barbet on the branch that is sort of slightly above my head and luckily it's not flown away yet <laughs> thank goodness for that hey beautiful look at that look at that big sharp beak it's a very large beak obviously barbets are omnivores so when you do look at birds you sort of can tell their diet just from the beak shape alone and the fact that it is omnivorous it will take insects from the ground which is probably why it sits high on branches to scan the ground but it also does feed on a wide range of fruit and even nectar so it's got this big big sort of really easy to identify beak so that it can feed on a wide range of on a wide range of food everybody. There's a male lion not too far up ahead here. And we suspect it's part of the Evoca coalition. So it's one of three. But we've only seen two and we've only had two together for a while now. And he's just has taken a little bit of notice of us, but he's kind of not too bothered, busy moving off into the bush. Okay, so the chap's just going, lying down again, getting quite relaxed. We do tend to put quite a lot of distance between us and the cats, um, in terms of just from a comfort level point of view. Like now that he's seen us, we're not gonna approach any closer. That would just be silly. You know, you're inciting either him to make a decision to run 
or to get quite aggressive. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to keep it nice and relaxed. But uh, in order to get a little bit closer, we're going to let Rusty know that uh, he can come and have a look-see. So we're going to pull out of the area, and then Rusty will make his way here. They have not moved much, but this Snarly, I believe is his name, he is one of the three evoker territorial males we have here. Now we've only got two of the three. We have Blondie, the one with the blonde mane, and Snarly, the one when he does face us, he's got a bit of a... It almost looks like he got a bit scalped on the one side, so he's missing a bit of his mane. And then we have the dark mane, male lion, but he is not here. It just seems to be the two brothers. And they have been around in this area the last few days, and we have noticed that one of them is limping quite a lot. And they're not old lions. They, I think they were born in 2013. So they're still very... They're in their prime now. So I think the injury it might have been in, might have been caused by hunting. Oh, you beauty. Hello, Sibui. It's so lovely to meet you. I feel honored and privileged. You see, she's got a nice distinctive notch in her left ear. Hello, you gorgeous girl. It's just too stunning. Just take a moment to just watch it. I'm just so in awe myself. I mean, you'd think a leopard is a leopard, but when you see a new individual, it is the most beautiful thing.
Oh, that's very violent of you. Oh, this is interesting. Can you see the ears mm -hmm. of the cub that's being bit? Look at that play. So this is nice. I like to, to watch how they interact with each other. Siblings, there you go. You see this, the ears back. <laughs> anyway, let us stick around here for a little longer. In the meantime, let me show you a beautiful sunset with Rusty. It is a gorgeous evening here. And it is getting a bit chilly around the edges, but at least the sky is putting on a show for us. I love the winter sunsets here, the colors, the few clouds we do get sometimes. It throws off an incredible pattern in the sky. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> what? <laughs> so we've just gone back to actually check on this pangolin situation and look who's decided to show himself. The old Duke himself. So Tengana has come onto the scene. This is just great. And he's coming quite close as well. Hello boy. How cool is this?